Hello and welcome to this virtual presentation as part of EGU 2021 on gamified geo challenges for immersive learning. My name is Tom Raimondo and I'm here representing the University of South Australia and Project Live together with my co-authors Justin, Alicia, Steve and Roger who I do want to acknowledge as being significant contributors to everything you're going to see today and without which uh, this project just simply would not have been possible. So what I'm going to do today is launch straight into a video demonstration of Beyond the Ice, the Hallett Cove VR Geo Challenge that we're going to be focusing on today. That'll just be a quick two minute summary uh, that gives you an impression of exactly what this experience is all about. Once you've seen it and you've got a bit of a taste of um, everything that we've done, uh, I'll start to deconstruct it, I guess. How do we bring together all the different elements that make up this VR learning experience, the different techniques, the different approaches that were applied? As I do that, I'll talk about some of the benefits of our approach and of course, some of the challenges and issues that we faced. I'll also talk a little bit about access and inclusion and some of the opportunities that a VR approach offers that differ to our traditional teaching approaches in that space. And once I've done that, there'll be a quick summary and conclusion um, and some future directions, I guess, that we're pursuing um, as part of this project. Now, as I go through everything that I'll be talking about, all the examples that I'll be providing, you can find very quickly and easily on our website that you can see there at Project Live. .org.au, so I do encourage you to check that out. But without further ado, let's roll the tape, sit back, relax, and see what this project was all about. Now that you've got a bit of an impression about what makes up the Halico VR experience, I'll unpack some of the different elements that you saw and how they operate in that VR environment. Uh, the first thing you might have seen, of course, is VT, our interactive uh, robot guide, with a memory, as it says there, spanning 600 million years. That's his, uh, that's his uh, cute little face that you can see there, and you would have seen him uh, floating through many of those clips that you just saw guiding the user to, to different parts of the scene, giving them a hand, launching various different cut tasks, and being your kind of pocket assistant, if you like, as you go through. Now, some of the tasks um, that were performed that you might not have picked up, and I'll just um, take you through each of those in turn. The first one was that there's an interactive hand lens that the user can pick up and use to identify fossils. They can also measure glacial striations using a compass which sits on their wrist. They can draw the outlines of folds and layers in the sedimentary rocks uh, using digital ink that appears as annotations on the scene and really reveals much of the structure of the images. They can take part in some quizzes that test their knowledge uh, and inform them about different parts of the landscape. They can collect 3D pet rocks, as we call them, which are scans of some of the key lithologies that they see as they go through uh, the Hallett Cove Conservation Park. And finally, they also have access to an interactive lab environment where they can return to at any time during the VR experiences and is really the launch pad for many of the different elements that make up the tour. They will reveal a geological history of Hallett Cove that's unlocked as they progress through the various different sites. Um, there are some hidden Easter eggs that they can also unlock as they learn different things throughout the experience. It's also where their pet rocks are collected, for example, and where they can launch fly-throughs to various different uh, scenes within Hallett Cove itself and even undertake a bit of a drone tour of the, con of the whole conservation park. 
So how do we assemble all of the different components that make up the Helico VR experience? What I'll do now is deconstruct that for you, give you a bit of a behind the scenes look at how everything came together to create this experience. So you'll see a bunch of different uh, technologies in that list there that we use to create some visual aspect of the Helicove um, experience. Let me just unpack those a bit for you now. Um, so the first and second one really do go hand in hand. Drone surveying. So aerial um, imagery is a fantastic way to, aspect, to access a landscape in a new way. And the drones really do give, that, give us that perspective, whether it's some aerial footage, for example, and we can hang 360 cameras, like the example you can see in the image there, um, to create a very immersive um, bird's eye view um, moving across the landscape, something that you cannot get on the ground, for example. And it's also fantastic to create some very large scale photogrammetry models, so um, 3D models that is. So in the case of the Halico Conservation Park, for example, we were able to map the entire park using a drone. So we have an interactive 3D model of everything that any visitor would see when they went to that site. And that also works uh, just as well, if not better, at the small scale. So individual examples of 3D models at Black Cliff, for example, or the Sugarloaf and everything in between. We also use photogrammetry to collect many of the individual hand samples, so the 3D models that became the pet rock collection that the um, users would um, assemble as they went through the experience. Uh, that was all done via photogrammetry. One of the other components that makes up the virtual tour is deep zoom photography or gigapixel photography as it's often called. Uh, that's an image that looks like a single shot but in fact is made up of hundreds and in some cases thousands of images which have been stitched together. Now that gives the user the ability to go from a very broad view of a scene, for example, uh, looking at Hallett Cove Conservation Park as a whole, or a particular part of the cliff section, for example, and then being able to zoom right in to very minute details in the cliff face or in the far distance in the amphitheater, for example. So it's a great way to combine different scales from the very broad scale up to the very fine scale. A great way to see the, the landscape from those two perspectives all at once. Terrestrial laser scanning was another technology that we used, we dabbled in a little bit and you might see in some of the other tours that we've assembled later on in this presentation. I won't go too much more into that. Um, the other one is uh, 360 degree photos and videos. These are fantastic ways to immerse yourself in the tour uh, and really feel like you're there. So rather than just showing the user a shot at each of the, the key sites as they navigate around, rather they're placed in the scene as though they're there, they can manipulate their head movement to look at whatever they would prefer to look at. Um, and of course that works well with still images, but it works really, really well with moving images as well. So you can feel like you're walking along the boardwalk, for example. You can feel like you're sitting within a drone, hovering over Hallett Cove and, and uh, uh, moving across the conservation park to see it from all angles. Things that you just cannot do um, as part of your regular visitor experience outside of VR. The other thing that we built into it, which I'll show a little bit more later on, is using your mobile phone. And that provides supplementary information if you were to visit uh, the site itself, um, so that you can be fed information about a site you're looking at using geotracking uh, to alert you when you're at a site of interest, and uh, giving you a pocket companion, if you like, to guide you through the site and reveal things that you might not have noticed if you were just wandering around or, or looking for the traditional signage that's in place. So I'll show you a little bit more about that later on. The key thing as we went through this, I guess, though, is we, we recognise that um, in any experience, this applies in learning experiences, it, apply, it applies certainly in tourism experiences as well, is that one size does not fit all. I alluded to this a little bit earlier on when I talked about the accessibility of VR. Whilst I would argue it is quite accessible, we recognise that not everyone has a headset. That's just a simple fact. The technology is getting quite mature, um, a lot more people are getting access to it, but still there are a large number of people that have never experienced VR before and don't have the means to do that. We didn't want to um, prevent them from having a go at the uh, Beyond the Ice experience, so we wanted to create a number of different ways that they could do that with some more basic technology that everyone has access to. And the way we did that, as you can see there, is a few different um, a few different platforms. The first one being a web-based geotour. So we took all of the different elements, all the different assets um, that we'd um, acquired to produce the VR experience and translated into one that runs in any regular web browser. So you can access it 
um, on a laptop or a desktop PC that you might have. You can access it on a tablet. You can do it on your phone. Um, whatever um, device that you might have that has a regular web browser will give you the opportunity to experience a quite an interactive web-based tour. And it's not just images, it contains all the videos, it contains all the voiceovers, it contains a whole range of different uh, interactive and engaging components that are borrowed straight from the VR experience. So it is quite an authentic replica of what you see there. The other thing is to take it into the mobile uh, sphere as well, as I alluded to before, mobile learning games. So if you were inspired, for example, to go to Halleck Cove itself, um, you could experience um, a bit more information being fed to you via a mobile app. So if you look on our website at the Beyond the Ice uh, webpage, you'll find links to uh, the iOS and the Android app stores where you can download these apps and take it along with you um, to be given a whole range of different information when you're there at site. So another alternative platform for people to access some of this information. And the final one that I've got there is Street View Trails. If you want a bit of a different experience, I guess that lends itself probably to uh, trail walking, for example. You don't necessarily need all of the different interpretive information so much. You just want to get a feel for what the natural environment is like and plan your way through it. Uh, we collected every single walking trail that exists in Hallett Cove. Uh, we collected immersive 360 images every five metres um, uh, to create a virtual street view, if you like, that you can navigate at your own pace. So you can just press play and almost do a virtual walking tour through the entire conservation park. You can pause it wherever you like. You can change your orientation to look at whatever you would prefer to look at. So another way to access that entire landscape at your own pace and focusing on what you would like to focus on. I think this diverse and multi-platform approach is critically important from the point of view of access and inclusion. And I think this is, there's something really to be said about what VR offers as opposed to uh, the on-site um, geotourism experiences alone because it, it does create completely new audiences and completely new opportunities. Some people just cannot physically get to particular sites due to their remoteness or how rugged the terrain is. We see VR as a critical way to create something that is very, very close to the experience that they would get had they had the opportunity to visit it on site. And not only that, I would argue, in fact, it gives you something that you can't even get when you're on site. So the ability, for example, to fly through the air in a drone and see the landscape from that point of view. Everyone who's ever been to a spectacular um, uh, environment to see geology has thought, I wish there was a helicopter ride here, or I guess alternatively, I wish I could afford the helicopter rides that are available here. I guess with VR, we've got that base covered. You can have your own VR helicopter experience, if you like, flying through the landscape, seeing it from angles that you just can't get on the ground. Now that you've seen a little bit about our Hallett Cove VR Geo Challenge and the work we're doing in the VR space as part of Project Live, I guess that begs the question of where to next for us. We do have a bunch of exciting projects that are on the horizon. We'll be progressively releasing those via our website that you can see there, projectlive.org.au. And if you visit now, what you'll also see is a bunch of existing virtual tours and other content that we've developed that is all freely available. If you're interested, you can also see our work as part of the EGU Video Games Jam this year at the web address that's listed below. That's all from me for now. Thanks very much for watching this presentation. And I look forward to hearing your questions and comments as part of the Games for Geoscience session.